everyone in the gallery and to our councillors and I declare the meeting open at 6.07. The public is advised that it is council policy to record the proceedings of meetings of council on digital media to assist in the preparation of minutes and to ensure that a true and accurate record or account of debate and discussion of meetings is available. This audio recording is authorised by the Local Government Meeting Procedures Regulations 2015. Firstly, I would like to begin with acknowledgement of country. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Tomagina people, and to pay our respect to those that have passed before us, their history and their culture. Item one is record of attendance. We have a full uh, complement of councillors this evening and in attendance, our general manager, uh, Shane Crawford, Director of Infrastructure and Development Services, Daniel Summers. Director of Community Engagement, Tracy Bradley and Sally Blank, our uh, Executive Officer. And Sam Searle, she's not listed. Finance, <laughs> <laughs> that will do. No apologies and uh, leave of absence, Neil. Confirmation of the previous minutes. There is a recommendation before the councillors. Could I have a mover, please, of that recommendation? So moved. Could I have a seconder? I'll second that. Thank you. Are there any amendments or corrections that are necessary before I put this forward? No comments, corrections uh, to those minutes have been identified. Uh, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, <coughs> carried unanimously. Declarations of interest. Uh, are there any declarations of interest from the councillors this evening? From the staff? No, we'll move on to item four. Announcements by the, the Mayor, 4.1. I have no announcements this evening. 4.2, my communications and correspondence. Could I have a mover for... Um, so, that moved. so moved, Councillor Bramage. A seconder, please. Second. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Are there any queries about um, my diary or uh, my correspondence? Yes, Councillor Bramage. Uh, are you able to give us an update at this stage on the Guildford Wind Farm or uh, not? I don't think I can give you an update, but I might pass it to <laughs> the General Manager. Uh, through Miss Mayor, perhaps what we're best to do to answer that question, Councillor Bramich, there are community information um, sheets, if you like, or information packs that are available. So perhaps the best thing to do would be to circulate that information pack so you can um, peruse at your own time. But um, yeah, they are periodically, I guess, uh, posted through the community in Waratah. Um, they're posted o online, obviously, um, and placed at the post office there in, in Waratah as well. So perhaps rather than me speak to it, um, we'll distribute that information. If I could just ask, you've got uh, correspondence going to the Secretary Health Department regarding temporary paramedic contra uh, contracts. Can I just ask what the content perhaps of the that was? Yes, the purpose of that letter was to encourage support of the temporary paramedics um, to bring them into line with the permanent... Um, 
paramedics that are employed by the state government um, because there's been enough information out there about the fact that the temporary paramedics are under as much uh, duress as the permanent ones and I think that they should be treated equally. However, I don't think we've had a response. Would that be right? Um, uh, uh, I believe we have. Um, so obviously since that letter was written, those temporary um, paramedic contracts have now been, I guess, honoured and they're now permanent positions is my understanding so um, yeah there's a response of that nature yes there's a response <laughs> thank you are there any further questions please no further questions I shall put the motion I shall put the motion all those in favor please say aye, aye. none against that I can see anyone against no <coughs> carried unanimously Reports by delegates. Councillor Raw, you have um, a Women at the Watershed report. If you would like to share that, please. Yeah. Um, on International Women's Day on the 8th of March, we had um, an event called Women at the Watershed Wynyard. Um, and so Waratah Wynyard Council collaborated with Big Heart to provide the community with an event. Um, we obtained some grant funding, $2,000 from the Department of Premier and Cabinet, which made sure the event could go ahead and be um, a, a great event. Um, it was held at the watershed, as the name suggests, and it was a perfect venue to have that. Um, it was set up as a learning opportunity for women through printmaking and a forum over lunch. Um, so the luncheon was also designed to give women the opportunity to network and the big focus of the day was actually inclusion, um, all women feeling that they could be included. Um, so there were two printmaking workshops on the day and they were run by the local na artist Nadia and she gave incredible guidance in printmaking. So it was a new skill and a new pra practice for most people who attended. The first workshop was for employees from Vincent Industries who... Um, and they worked alongside students from Wynyard High School, so that was the inclusion part of it, trying to give women who work at Vince Vincent Industries with a disability um, an inclusive event where they could come along and do an art activity. And the high school um, students are doing a, um, a tourism um, subject, and so that gave them the opportunity to work with people from a, with a disability and um, how you do that from a, a tourism sort of perspective. Um, and also too, that was practice for those students because they're going to host their own similar event very soon. Um, so they had a great opportunity to have real life practice of their skills. The second workshop was open to any female resident from Waratah Wynyard in the afternoon and there were 15 people that came along to that. Um, so, and everybody worked on an individual panel for their printmaking and they were actually um, woven together to make one huge um, um, artwork. Um, the luncheon was set up to include a forum panel of three local women, who, women who were willing to talk about their lives and how they've advanced in their careers. So the three guests were Dr Mary Kew, um, Greta Kingston and Fiona Dowling and they spoke on things that made their careers hard and things that had worked for them and helped them to advance or move forward in what they wanted to do. Um, and they also had a, a good focus on being confident and having a go um, and it was also on asking questions and getting support from others when things get tough when you're working towards your career or what you want to do. Um, overall, the day seemed a great success. Feedback was very successful. So there were 50 women who took part in the event and so hopefully that will have laid the foundations um, for a, an International Women's Day event every year um, and hopefully we'll be able to grow that and make it a bigger event. But there was one proviso on... Um, having the women from um, Vincent Industries and that was that on International Men's Day could we provide the same sort of event for the men and I just said yes sure we'll do that um, so hopefully I'll be looking at the men <laughs> around that time and saying we're going to put in for another grant and what will we do to involve those Vincent Industries um, male workers in a day. Thank you, Leanne. That was a full report and uh, the council really appreciates what you 
uh, what you actually uh, facilitated, and I'm sure that the community obviously do appreciate what you have done, so that's great. And uh, I'll get you to put it in your diary to remind those men that they need to um, organise their own men's day. Um, we'll move... <laughs> we'll move on to 4.4, which is notification of council workshops. There's a recommendation that the council note the following workshops. Could I have a mover for that recommendation, please? So moved. Uh, councillor, uh, sorry, yeah, Councillor Roberts. Could I have a uh, Councillor Bramage? Are there any queries, comments to make on that item? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye, aye. Against? Carried unanimously. We move on to item five, public questions and statements. There is a response to a public question, uh, Mr. Austin, motorbike parking on 5.1.1, 5.1.2. Mr. Hutchison, December minutes, posed a question and another question from Mr. Hutchison, 5.1.3. These have been uh, answered with the officer's responses. 5.2, public questions received in writing, none have been received. And before we go on to 5.3, the public questions without notice, I shall read out uh, a statement from the Council. The Council encourages community participation in its meetings through the opportunity for public questions and statements. Consistent with Council's core values, councillors and staff strive to ensure all people are treated with respect and integrity. We expect our residents and ratepayers to apply similar standards in their dealings with Council. As Mayor, it is my responsibility to maintain the orderly conduct of council meetings and to determine whether a question or statement is out of order due to the use of offensive, objectionable or defamatory expressions. I ask members of the public to show proper consideration and courtesy in their comments. We have three, um, lots of questions this evening and uh, these are the public questions without notice, 5.3. Mr Hutchison, would you like to come forward, please? Good evening. Uh, I'll just refer to page 92 of tonight's agenda. Uh, it's in regards to the Aldina Reserve Stakeholder Group meeting notes. Um, point seven, um, the council staff indicated that council staff does not own the land and has no obligation to undertake any planning or improvements to the site. Um, so council staff are continuing to push the agenda of not wanting to do anything with the reserve. But my question is, is this reflective of the councillors associated to this working group? So if I could have comment from councillor Johnson and councillor Corton in regards to this position by council staff. Councillor Courtney, do you have a response to the question? No, mate. I went into Labor on the Noel Jago Bridge. I want Aldina reopened and I would have liked to have been included in the meeting. So no, it's not reflective of what I think and what I think the community wants. Thank you for your comment, Councillor Courtney. Councillor Johnson, do you have any uh, extra comments to add to this, please? Um, I'm pretty much the same. I uh, wasn't included in the meeting, so uh, therefore, yeah, um, none the wiser. Thank you both. Okay. Um, under point nine, it says, no other ideas were put forward to the group during the meeting. My question is, what about the other ideas shared leading up to the group formation? All the ideas I put to council over the, the years, and the only idea that's recorded is one that I've put forward um, amongst many others. So, yeah, I guess, why weren't those ideas shared with STT? We'll take that question on notice, Mr Hutchison. Okay, and it also states that um, the reason Sorry, there was consensus that it would be difficult for any group to take on the site and look after it due to many clubs now lacking in volunteers and expertise. My question is, based on what information and data would it be difficult for groups um, to care uh, due to volunteer and expertise limitations? 
We'll take that one on notice as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then it follows up with a statement that says, similar to what happened with the Pony Club proposal, um, but feedback from the initial concept plan and reports from the public um, to me uh, o over that process is that the Pony Club was actually split over whether to go and relocate to the Aldina Reserve. So how can Council state that um, state this in the in that point? Um, I'll just leave that at there. Um, and it was determined in point 11 that the group um, determined that the further stakeholder meeting is not required at this stage as STT will liaise with interested parties directly. So my question is, what was the point of council involvement um, if the only outcome is that anyone could have went to STT and asked? In my opinion, the point of this whole process was to identify how council can support the community to reaccess the reserve. So if this is the outcome, what was the point of the whole process? I'll take that question on notice also. I think Mr. Hutchison. Am I allowed to make a comment? Councillor Roberts, no comments, thank you. Those were just questions that came to me then, but I had come prepared with another question. Um, so Mayor Dunham, uh, once you stated to me in public question statement time, uh, an interesting phrase. So my question is for you um, to fill in the blank. Uh, we were elected by the people for the what? Fill in the missing word. Could you repeat that question, please, Mr. You stated Hutchison. to me uh, we were elected by the people for the what? What was the word that you used? I will uh, respond to you in writing. Okay. Thank you. I'll give you the I'll give you the word. It was the word people. So you stated we were elected by the people for the people. So my question to you is, what does that phrase mean to you? That phrase, Mr. Hutchison, is a very broad phrase. Not just one person. Our community is over 13,000 people and not just one person who keeps asking the same questions over and over. So yes, we were elected or are elected by the people for the people and uh, I think that uh, in terms of what we do, we are actually working for the people. It's not just um, opinions, it is a democracy around this table and we will make our decisions through a democratic process. So are council meetings for elected representatives to make decisions for the people? Of course, again, I state we are, we are there for the people and our, our decisions are made around the table through a demo democratic uh, process of debate and then decision making. All right, so in tonight's agenda, Council is proposing to change its meeting procedures, specifically around public question time. Are these changes for the people or simply to stop the people from asking certain questions? I think that we'll take that question on notice. However, Mr Hutchison, if you do look through the agenda, you will see that there are some very strong justifications for the changes made. And it is not just in terms of stopping people, it is allowing us to refine our processes. Okay, so in my observations, I don't believe that this council is interested in accountability um, demonstrated by some actions and statements by certain councillors um, and being defensive and telling mistruths to cover over problems or say there is no problem um, highlights this point. Um, you can talk about transparency and how you aren't secretive all you want but actions communicate different, uh, differently and uh, a much stronger message and if you don't believe that is true then I ask you to pr prove it by answering questions that I ask, not just pick and choose which ones you answer, and release information to the public when it is requested, um, when you cannot provide reasonable justification. 
you've talked about democracy and democratic process. Well, in my view, dem democracy is the right to have an equal say and freedom to speak. Yes, there is courtesy and respect that should be followed, um, but th the council meetings that um, have been uh, run since you have become mayor um, are becoming less and less democratic. Um, and I, I don't think the public or myself should tolerate it. Um, so in regards to the council meeting procedure uh, updates proposed, um, if you vote for these changes without addressing the very real concerns I have, um, and some, some of those concerns have been sent directly to councillors, then I don't really have confidence in councillors' ability to represent the community through this, um, in my view, um, display of unjustified power. Thank you for your uh, opinion, Mr Hutchison. Travis Williams, if you'd like to come forward and um, ask you a question. Right, thank you everyone tonight. Um, way out of my com comfort zone here. Um, just want to ask the question about a pump track uh, for Winyet in the area. Um, I've been involved with all things bikes for over 40 years and I'd like to see some more of that sort of thing in the community and I know that the BMX track had a major upgrade here a couple of years back now and that's been a great thing for us all and I was hoping that maybe a suggestion was to put a pump track up in that sort of similar area so we could all um, you know get on there and uh, tie it all into one Through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, thank you for for coming and, and raising your idea. Um, to the best of my knowledge, there's no current plans for for a pump track in in Waratah and Windsor. But um, you know, following your suggestion, like any good suggestions, we can you know, explore uh, further. We have in that particular area, we have uh, a master plan for the Frederick Street Recreation uh, space, and um, that's due for review or update, if you like, um, next financial year. Um, I know that's only you know, three or four months away, but there'll be a couple of the, the councillors here that will be you know, part of that group um, and can you know, sort of follow that, that idea through. And clearly there's a lot of you know, um, work to do to see you know, justification and use and you know, all those sorts of things to, to work through. But I think that's probably the best process for it to be incorporated in um, and to you know, explore whether or not there's a, um, an interest in that um, or not you know, within this particular area. Yeah, um, yeah, right, thank you, and um, if there's any opportunity, you know, like um, if anyone wants to bounce any ideas off me or something like that, I'm happy to get involved in that sort of area too, so mm -hmm. happy to help out if I can. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Now we have um, our next one is... Mr Ewington, I was saying hello to you before and <laughs> your name slipped. Mm -hmm. Mr Ewington, you've got a statement and question, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut, go out and come in again. No, please, ask your... Uh, make your statement and ask your question. I'd like to commence... Is it coming through? I'd like to commence my statement. Management of the environment. We have a weed called ragwort, which is a recognised noxious weed. We've had major breaks, outbreaks throughout Flower community. And this current year, we've got it down to a point where a small outbreak in Gates' Road, Flower on a dairy property. I acknowledge that the community, the members, sorry, I acknowledge the I gave knowledge to the to the the 
weed control officers and that that the the, fl the wag board is in flower in January. I regain reported in early February and now March today there's still several plants in that area. This concerns me because four months has transpired and no action has been taken. We have done, spent many years at trying to contain this weed and we got it to the point where we can really keep a, on top of it but now four months has passed by and the, the, the weed is now in, coming into seed p position of spreading weed, uh, seed. So this concerns me that there's nothing had been done about it. I would like the council staff to take action and get these few weeds attended to. I also like to talk about my old foxglove weed. I know the government, state governments recognise that it's not an obvious weed, but I didn't come to here to explain to you good people what this weed is to try and get you to then go to the government say to write and recognise as an obvious weed. I'm trying to say to you good people here in this council, we've got a weed that is spreading. It's not an obvious weed. It's poison to humans, poison animals, and spreads like wildfire. I have found recently that it's spread throughout Muna right through to the gorge, through the bushland now. And it's, and it's in all plantations. It's at our national icon, the table cape at the foot of that uh, uh, icon. And it's also in the town boundary of Wynyard. So what I'm trying to say, you good people, you can do a lot. Firstly, you can train your staff to, notify, to identify the weed. And if they come across this weed, take action and spray it and contain it, not slash it, because each plant has one million seeds in each plant. So if we don't act and try and contain this weed, it's going to be through all our bushland and walkways in the community and destroy the, the, the appearance of our community. Because we introduced this weed, it's not part of Tasmania, and this is something I'm trying to get across to you good people. So that's another thing I'd like you to consider, consider because I've also given you an uh, ex-councillor, Maureen Bradley, how you can contact and discuss how the weed affected her in a, in a very short time. And also I feel that the council should put more on, on your uh, Facebook, council Facebook, and also when the when you, when you Agricultural Show is on, that the council go along and put a display up for all the noxious weeds and other environmental issues in the community. And this is a good opportunity to get out to, and, and show the community what's going on. I think the council's not doing enough in that field and we need, need a little bit more push from the members to do this. Also, there is sterile plants being developed now so they can sell them out of the nursery but they won't fertilise and, and create seed. I do encourage you to write letters to the nurseries and see if they can be encouraged to only sell the sterile plant because it is bad news. Next topic is slash the road verges. I have highlighted how a good contractor can do a good, efficient and professional job. But upon themselves, the council decided to take it in-house. They've got inferior machinery, they don't have the expertise and the work they're doing is not good, far from it. I've gone along and seen their work, they leave sections of, of grass and rubbish, they don't slash to the fence line, they don't show professionalism to it and we're not getting good value because we, and I feel the council should redirect and at least get the contract to come in one year and do it because they can do it efficiently, quickly and make a, a good job and we're entitled, the rural community is entitled to have a good road verge done for reasons of fire, safety, for access, for vehicle traffic, keeps the environment clean, uh, it controls the vermin because the vermin live in the long grass and, and other things because at the moment I'm so disappointed in the standard the council is presenting in slashing the road verges because you just waste the money because you're not doing the job correctly. And if you're not doing the job correctly, get a contractor to do it who knows the work and he puts his heart into it and he does a good job. So please take note of that. 
Thank you. Now, question one. Have been informed that the council has no responsibility in maintaining overhead branches and vines on pathways and vehicle access. There has been several ratepayers who have contacted the council office and been informed the council does not manage this role any no more controlling of the vegetation overhanging walkways where the people cannot have safe access travelled through along the pathway walkways, preventing disability members access to the community and be part of the community. Can the management provide reasons why they have taken this position of no action of overhanging vegetation, restricted movement, allowing pedestrians provide safe pathway, pathway to allow members of the community have ex access and inclusion with the community? Question uh, two. That, no, thank you. I'll pass over to Mr Summers, the Director of Engineering. Uh, thanks through you, Mayor. Look, uh, Council has a service level for its footpaths with a uh, position on overhanging vegetation that it will remove it. Um, and it also talks about where that vegetation comes from private property. There's a section in the Local Government Highways Act that um, gives Council the power to issue notices to private property owners to remove that vegetation. I, I think probably best if I contact Mr Ewington tomorrow, uh, get some detail of the examples he talks about. But um, for, for mine, the current position of Council is that it does remove overhanging vegetation over footpaths and it has the power to issue notices to property owners where that vegetation comes from private property. Question two. Thank you. Yes, you can go on with question two. Thank you. The council is the principal owner of the footpath between Vinnie's and the major fuel depot in Jackson Street. It's just, they've got the main service fuel service station. There's a, there's a uh, raised flower bed and the footpath. Currently the complex has been leased to the fuel company to manage the fuel side of things and I've been told that the footpath and the raised flower bed belongs to them. I feel that's not good enough. We have, we have the current state of this area is not maintained by the council and presenting more image for the community. Why is it so different for the council, council staff in keeping this area clean and tidy including flowering plants in the raised flower bed to provide a good image for the tourists and the local members of the community? And Mr Summers. Yep, uh, thanks through you, Mayor. Uh, look, I, I believe in this instance the footpath sits with Council and the flower beds Mr Ewington talks about sit within the leased area. I, I'm also of the understanding that the lease holder has indicated a willingness to uh, rejuvenate those garden beds. So we, we can take that on notice to give Mr Ewington a more detailed answer, but that's what I have at hand at the moment. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ewington. Now we have uh, Fiona White and Tanya Johnstone, if you would like to come forward. Hello. Um, thanks for the opportunity to uh, make our statement. We're just um, supporting one another because we're not very used to public speaking. Um, a group of concerned residents have recently formed an action group called Keep Our Coast Clean to raise awareness of the potential expansion of the fin fish industry, namely Atlantic salmon along our coastline. An area that was earmarked in a recent study as being fin fish aquaculture, high biophysical suitability, was from Robbins Island through to Penguin and beyond. This includes Rocky Cape, a national park area, King Island, Sisters Beach, Boat Harbour Beach, Somerset Burnie and of course Wynyard. Seeing the environmental damage and the recent community backlash to the industry in Hobart areas and Macquarie Harbour leaves many in our community concerned um, about the future of our waterways. Tonight our main point for attending the meeting is to let councillors know of an up and coming rally we have organised to get information out to the public. The rally is on Sunday the 2nd of April at Guttridge Gardens in Wynyard. Um, we'll begin with some live music at 12.30 and our speakers will start at 1. We have included the program in a short bio of each person's topic. So we have Christina Schley. Schley, sorry I'm not sure of the pronunciation. 
Welcome to Country and then First Nations Perspective. Christina is a Senior Curriculum Officer for Aboriginal Education Services. Passionate about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders' histories and cultures being taught in schools. She believes very strongly that once you lose something so precious, you can never get it back. And that is why No Salmon Farms in Bass Strait is very important to her. We also have Louise Cherry, Environment Management Specialist, who resigned from her position on the Marine Farming Review Panel. Supportive of a sustainable salmon industry, she fought for transformation, but was confronted with an unwillingness to learn from our lived history in Macquarie Harbour and the Don Catas... Got do <laughs> I, knew I'd get I knew I'd mess up there. The waterway in between mainland Taz and Bruni Island, Don Catas... Oh, I just can't get the pronunciation. Anyway, once she realised the flawed legislation provides decision-making by a minister and has no right of appeal for communities, she felt she had no choice but to resign. We also have Glenn Saltmarsh, founding member of the North West Board Riders. Glenn has surfed all his life around Burnie and the North West Coast. He remembers the pollution from heavy industry in Burnie and the conditions the pollution lef left on the Burnie beaches and waterways. They would be unable to enter the waters when there was an easterly due to the effects of the pollution had on the surface. He will speak of the improvements that he, as a recreational user of the ocean, has seen recently. Now, the heavy industries are no longer there. We also have Gerard Castles, an international business consultant who grew up at Sunnyside on the northwest coast. He is a long-term Bruni Island shacky. He has travelled the world for work and now more than ever sees a future for Tasmania as a fragile icon for the rest of the world that we must protect fight for and pass on intact to future generations. He has been at the forefront of the battle to get salmon out of the waters of Don de Castro. Lockie Rankin and Dieter Linden. These are our future generation speakers. Both Lockie and Dieter represent the youth of our community. They will be speaking about their concerns and what outcomes they would like to see for the future of our town and our environment. We also have Glenda Forbert. Glenda is the Vice President of Northwest TAS for Clean Oceans. Glenda will be speaking briefly to pass on information about um, Northwest TAS for Clean Oceans and the Tasmanian salmon industry validation of expansion petition that is being collated to send to the Tasmanian government. I'm sure we all know Craig Garland. Craig is a local fisherman and a recreation user of our waterways. Craig has expansive knowledge of our marine life and ocean environment. He will speak on the current state of the fishing industry, the potential of harm to the breeding areas of certain marine species, the environment, in, sorry, the environmental impact the industry can have on our waters, and the long-term concerns he has for our oceans. We encourage councillors to attend our rally on Sunday, April the 2nd, to hear our concerns. We would even be happy if you shared the word around for us. We do ask that if you attend and take photos, etc., that you post on Facebook, please remain true to what we are about. This is about our community and what like-minded people are genuinely concerned about. Flinders Island Council has taken a stand against future developments of fish farms around Flinders Island and we know that state government have a lot to say over local councils, but we hope in that in the future, our council may take a stand too, for our future generation's sake. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you, Fiona and Tanya. So that's the end of our public questions and statements. We'll be moving on to item six, petitions, deputations, presentations. We have a petition before us, the reduction of speed limit on Cooper's Lane to 80 kph. There is a recommendation there, two parts of the recommendation. Could I have a mover for that particular item, please? Yeah, I'll move the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Yeah, I'll second that. Councillor Bromwich seconded. Councillor Highland, would you like to speak to this motion, please? Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I've got no problem with uh, putting that forward to get a report done by our staff and uh, come back to Council. It's 
becoming a bit of a thing now, I think, in country roads that uh, there's accidents that are happening, continuing to happen, so at least we can try and help out there by reducing the, the speed limit, and I think most of our roads now, uh, within a radius of Wynyard, are being reduced, uh, and I think we've got another one on the agenda tonight to uh, actually be approved. The process has been run on that one. So I've got no problem with that at all, and I'd ask councillors to support it. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Bramage. Yeah, I'll probably go a little bit further, and I agree with what Councillor Highland said. I think it's time. Uh, I think Circular Head have got a similar problem to us with, with the road speeds. I think it's time we got the state government involved to audit, to audit our country roads again, a and. Uh, do it properly this time, figure of speech. Uh, and because you hear the statistics, the, the, the deaths in the country are unreal on country roads through speed, I suppose. It mightn't stop everyone from speeding, but there's a sign there to say what to do. And I think it's something we should look at in our municipality as well. It should be a statewide thing, but trying to get that to happen, is every now and again paint the speed limit on the road. You see it in Australia, the mainland, and I think we should get into that practice here of every now and again put 80 on the road, or whatever. Because you drive past the signpost once, and if you happen to miss it, you don't know what to do. But if you see it on the road every now and again, so I think it's something we could probably look at and get the state government involved and go that next step. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bramage. Uh, would you like white or yellow paint? <laughs> well, I thought the pink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Are there any further speakers for this motion or against this motion? Councillor Roberts. Um, I just want to state that this is a very reasonable request. Um, Obviously, we're a rural area, and uh, over time, some of these areas have been built up more and more. Um, so it does become a safety issue. Um, you know, some comments to the contrary, but it does show that council is listening, and that we're very happy to do so. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Johnston. I think it's a very good idea. Um, seems eighty or or less, in my opinion, um, especially uh, for some of the roadways that there are. Uh, obviously, our rural roads are a lot narrower than our open roads in, in town, and that's so. Yeah, it's a very good idea. Seems uh, the further out you go, the faster they get. Um, so, uh, if we can get this uh, happening sooner rather than later, um, it would be good for our community. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Any further speakers? No one has spoken against the motion. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against? Carried unanimously. We'll move into the uh, planning authority items and as there are no uh, planning authority items, we will move on to uh, item eight, matters raised by councillors. Uh, 8.1, responses to councillor questions taken on notice from the previous meeting and 8.1.1, councillor Courtney, your question with an officer's response. We have not received any questions uh, in writing. Uh, que councillor questions without notice. Are there any questions without notice, please? Councillor Courtney. Yeah, my first question without notice is, um, obviously I would have put a, a motion into council, but this came out on Wednesday, so I wanted to wait for the council response. Um, it notes that uh, we're going to come back with uh, some recommendation on the whistleblower policy, a change to the whistleblower policy. Is there any chance I can get a timeline on perhaps when we will get that? Will that be before the next meeting, do you think? Or? Uh, Mrs. Searle will um, respond, thank you. Thank you, through, through you, Mayor. Uh, the proposed timeline is before the next council meeting and um, we'll undertake some consultation with elected members between now and then on, on what changes they'd like to see as a part of that policy change. I've got a second question if it's okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, 
I note that again tonight, Mr Ewington has come in and mentioned ragwort that's on private property, foxglove, which isn't um, deemed a weed, and asked us to do something about it. Well, not asked us, actually made a statement. And in the statement, he made a point of saying that our equipment's not very good, that our staff aren't doing a very good job, and that our contractors need to be chastised. There was a lot of disparaging statements in there from Mr Ewington. I'm wondering at what time do we suggest that that's enough of that line of questioning and disparaging the staff in the way that they do their job because we don't tolerate it from anyone else. Mr GM, would you like to comment, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I understand the point that Councillor Courtney raises. Uh, we, uh, you're, you're quite right. If questions become repetitive in nature, um, yeah, we we will certainly inform the person that that question has been asked and responded to previously. And um, so perhaps I'll I'll take that on board and have a look through um, and see if there's any correspondence we need to uh, send to Mr Ewington. But Certainly, uh, we have had, as you rightly state, um, numerous um, in various forms of information go to Mr Ewington on, on those subjects. Um, we had a council report, I think, in January around Foxglove and the management of such, and our position and the uh, actions that we're, we're taking are well articulated and well pub um, and made publicly. So um, the information is there, so we'll, I'll, I understand the point and we'll, we'll take that on board. Cl clearly, um, the staff are acting to the service levels that are set to them. Um, so there's a there's a point of clarification um, clearly around those service levels. Yeah, you know, for example, they are they deliver in, in line with that service level, and if the expectation is that se that service level is not, um, I guess, not to expectation, that's a different discussion. I guess to, to what's being presented uh, around a level of competence, it's a it's a different debate that needs to be had. Thanks, Mr. GM. Uh, Councillor Courtney, I'll just remind you that I do read out a statement before any uh, questions or statements from um, the gallery. And I'll just read this second uh, paragraph. Consistent with Council's core values, councillors and staff strive to ensure all people are, tre are treated with respect and integrity. We expect our residents and ratepayers to apply similar standards in their dealings with Council. So that goes for anyone who comes to our Council and uh, makes a statement and asks a question. And I think they really do need to understand and remember that they have responsibilities also. Thank you. Are there any more questions without notice, please? Councillor Roberts. I actually have several questions, Mayor. Um, first one. Okay. Uh, the first question is in regards to the Aldina meeting. Uh, in reading the notes, uh, there are five attendees for that meeting, um, not including the two staff members that were at present at that meeting. Um, Do you mean staff members weren't present or councillors? No, there was two staff members present. Uh, there was five attendees. But as you've just pointed out, I did note that there were no councillors present at that meeting. And having noted that, I actually went and asked one of the councillors who um, is in charge of that um, why they weren't at that meeting. And I was informed that they weren't informed of that meeting. So my question is, will that meeting be re-held? Re um, obviously, it's important that the public understands that these matters are important to councillors and that um, when our councillors have to explain that they do care about them issues, obviously it could reflect poorly on the elected members. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Uh, Mr GM, would you uh, like to respond to this, please? Yeah, I can. Uh, through you, Mayor. You are correct. The, the two councillors on that committee were, were not invited uh, to that meeting. That is um, an error. Um, it's clearly an error. And um, we're, we're well, well aware of that. Ultimately, operational matters of council fall to my responsibility. So um, if you have any concerns or issues with that, please direct them to me um, because ultimately that is, that is my responsibility to ensure these things happen. So um, you know, please continue to, to raise that point. But you are correct. And it was simply an error that the invitation or the email did not include the elected members. As simple as that. Will the quest will the meeting be reheld at this point? Well, there's there's no, uh, I guess, indication that will be the case. 
um, those two councillors have been offered the opportunity for a, a full briefing um, on the content of the, the meeting. Um, that remains available and and clearly as the the notes say that um, yeah, at any point in time that there's some ideas or thoughts raised, um, they can be raised to STT and that group can be convened again. Um, that has been the case for a long time. If If anyone does have an idea or a thought that has some merit that they wish to explore through STT for this particular um, area, that they can talk to STT about that. Nothing has changed in that regard. So I think in the notes it says that, you know, should should an idea be brought forward that um, a further stakeholder meeting is not required to be organised at this stage as STT will liaise with interested parties directly. However, the group may meet again if it's determined to be required. So that option remains available if need be, if there's um, legitimately something to discuss. You making further comment to Councillor Roberts? I am Roberts? making a further comment on that first question. Thank you. Uh, one is, uh, Shane, that I've noted that you do an excellent job administrating and governing this organisation. So um, unfortunately these things do happen. Um, the importance of that question is that I'd want the public to know that things like this, um, there could be this narrative that council is against the Aldina Reserve. Um, I know I'm not speaking just for myself when I say that the councillors, some of the councillors, at least to my knowledge, are open to the possibility of such things happening should there be an actual relevant resolution to that. Um, obviously we would encourage the members of the public to liaise with councillors about such issues and I would never want it to seem that we do not care. So that's question one, thank you. Thank you, uh, another question? I do, I've got a few more. Um, How many do you have? I actually have four on okay. this little list here. Go for question two then, right, thank you thank Councillor you. Roberts. Um, one, the next question I have is um, just a question that I thought of after the last meeting in regards to Councillor Courtney asking about the whistleblower policy. Um, do we actually have staff satisfaction surveys for our staff here so that they can actually anonymously provide feedback of the performance of the organisation? Uh, th through Mayor, I guess there's two processes we conduct internally. One's a, an annual staff satisfaction survey. Um, uh, typically the results um, of that are are provided to elected members um, you know, uh, during a workshop setting. Um, the second component of those surveys is what we call pulse so surveys. So they're smaller, um, sharper, you know, subject focused um, surveys that we hold you know, throughout the year. Um, so we do a combination of both. But to answer your question, yes, they are uh, undertaken. Thank you, Mr. GM. Question number three, Mr. Uh, Councillor Roberts. Just another comment about that question. Again, the reason I ask it is just I want people from the outside to understand that we do care about the staff that work for this organisation and that we are interested in how they are performing and how they feel working for this organisation. Um, third question. Um, I've had people asking me about the lease in regards to the watershed. Um, obviously the groups such as Big Art, the Wynyard Yacht Club, the Marine Rescue, Paddles, Canoeing, um, Sailability all operate out of that facility. Um, they all do a wonderful job. Our Yacht Club is, I'd say, one of the leading in the state. Um, but there has been questions asked about accessibility of the facility. And um, while I have asked this question privately, I will just want it on the record of the council about when that lease will be looked at uh, and reviewed. Yeah, through you, Mayor, the, the lease term escapes me, but um, certainly the, the lease, I guess, has a... Has, well, this, I'll go back a step. So there are two leases with that particular building. Um, one's obviously with, with Big Heart for the, the cafe um, side or the cafe restaurant component. Um, that is a much shorter term and tenure, that particular lease, and that allows for annual reviews. Um, the second lease is with the Yacht Club. Um, the Again, that has annual review, but the review is mainly... Um, I guess narrowed focus to, to fees and charges, um, more than a broader review. Uh, however, I suspect that given both leases are 
um, you know, coming towards the end of their first 12 months, there will be a, you know, a full discussion around how the operations are performing and what the, the learnings and the observations are of the first 12 months. That, from memory, is, is due around mid-year this year. Thank you, Mr. GM. Question four, Councillor Roberts. Well, again, just a comment about question three. That question is for the public, so as they understand that when they do ask myself, not only myself, but other councillors about that, that we are listening and that we are inquiring ourselves. Um, okay, and the fourth one is in regards to uh, Mr. Williams' question about the pump track. Um, the Frederick Street Sports Complex portfolio is held by myself and Councillor Johnston. Um, obviously, all the groups in there do an amazing job. Um, the question is that obviously with the new sports precinct going ahead and with the cricket moving to the new sports precinct, is there potential to put a working group together maybe to look at future options for the Frederick Street Sports Complex? Mr GM. Yeah, through me, uh, the simple answer is yes, um, that it, that is the intent. Um, so the Frederick Street Master Plan as it is written now will need to be updated. Uh, I guess a number of things have evolved um, since the creation of that particular master plan and it is impacted by some of those current showground users and, and so forth. Um, so my recollection is that that will be a, an annual plan action for, for next year or certainly part of the program for next financial year uh, to occur for a working group to be um, developed and to progress that, that master planning process. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. That's the end of one more question. One comment at oh. the end of that question. Okay. Um, or just honestly, um, to the public, I highly encourage if you have any questions to attend the meeting and ask. Um, obviously, if we get that working group together, perhaps there's opportunity for you, Mr. Williams, to be involved in that. I appreciate your question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any more questions? Deputy Mayor Edwards. Um, I just wanted to kind of suggest um, that from Ken Ewington um, that we have the Tulip Festival coming up and I know he suggested about the Wynyard Show and doing some environmental, um, you know, education and that and I thought it might be a good idea to have a tent there because we already have like a Waratah Wynyard tent there so we could do some education or, you know, try and plan forward now um, to see if we can get a tent there with some environmental things that are happening in our area, um, yeah, to satisfy and educate people in our region. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Edwards. I'm sure we'll keep that comment uh, in mind for the, the Tulip Festival. My only comment is, um, and that wasn't a question, that was more a comment, um, but the... Uh, it's whether or not it's a council responsibility to do that or whether or not you know, Cradle Coast Authority through their NRM or whether or not a state government through NRE or there are other more appropriate bodies that have better information at hand than what we do to provide that information. So just bear that in mind that um, sometimes you know, these points are I put to council to deliver but we may not necessarily be the best person to deliver those things. Thank you, Mr GM. Are there any more questions? Uh, Councillor Highland. Thanks, uh, Madam Mayor. Just, uh, just a brief one, and I picked it up, I think, off radio or some media outlet that the state government is offering a lot of money around for uh, beautification of our town entrances. Uh, I just wondered if we'd had anything official yet or not. I've not heard, so I'll pass it over to our general manager. Uh, through men, no, I'm not. I'm not familiar with any funding, but I'm happy to explore. I know certainly that some of our neighbours have received funding to upgrade their entrance ways. Um, certainly, the um, yeah, I think both Burnie City Council and Devonport City Council have received uh, funding to improve their their entrances and so forth. But happy to take that on on notice, um, Councillor Highland, and explore further. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Uh, Councillor Johnston. Uh, just leading into that question, um, and I don't know how to go. Um, just walking up and down the street here, or so I, I have been walking up and down the street for a fair while now in our community, and just noticing, and I don't know how we go about it, um, and we're all about beautification and making our town look pretty smicko and, and our surrounds looking really good. 
is there any way that we can either get shop owners or, or yeah, I'll say um, the lease owners um, to address uh, some of the facades of the, the buildings? Um, at this stage, you, you look up in the main street and there's a few get looking a little bit ratty, e.g. signs broken, um, paint missing, um, yeah, fading of everything, moss on everything. Uh, we, we just need a, a general clean up of, of the main street. It's, it's our pride and joy um, and it's an entrance and I reckon we should make it shine. Um, so I put it, you know, well one way how we could do it to either a letter, letter drop or the owners or whatever um, just to see if they can sharpen their pencils so to speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Mr. JM, do you have any comment? Uh, very little, thank you, Mr. I understand the point, um, uh, and I'm not sure, to be to be honest, what if any attempts have been made previously either. Um, in, in that regard, some of the longer-serving councillors or other staff members here may have some more information than, than I do. But um, ha happy to explore that um, and, and come back with some ideas to you, Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Councillor Highland. Just if I may, uh, when we did the street upgrade, Councillor Bramage would be, remember this as well, we did, uh, we actually made an offer to every business in the main street uh, to make a contribution if they were prepared to make a contribution to do that very thing what you've just said. And we didn't get one uptake, I don't think, Councillor Bramage. No, that's right. And, and this has been an issue for the last 20 odd years that I'm aware of, is trying to get them to. And the Somerset is the same. So, look, I just don't know how we do it, if we can do it. Thank you all. Okay, so we'll move on to nine, which is notice of motion. We haven't received any. Uh, item 10 reports of officers and committees, table cape upgrades, project update. There is a recommendation before the councillors. Could I have a mover for the uh, motion, please? Yes, yeah, so moved. Councillor Highland, could I have a seconder, please? I'll second that. Uh, Councillor Raw. Councillor Highland, would you like to speak to this motion? Yeah, I'll only be brief this time, uh, Madam Chair. Um, you all know my thoughts on this project. Uh, we're probably about two years behind where we should be, but that's all I'll say there. Uh, the projects currently are going really well. The car parks and uh, is an excellent condition. I think we're we're still chasing the money for the toilet setup. Are we? We're still pursuing yeah. that, or we've got it. Th that's so correct. We are we are seeking funding. Yeah, we're still we're currently doing project, some yeah. more detailed designs to come back yep. with. Yeah. Yep. And uh, the walkway between the lighthouse and the. Uh, and the lookout, so yeah, no, it's looking pretty good up there. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Are there any further comments? Are there any, uh, Councillor Roberts? Again, um, our Community Activation Department uh, does a good job. Our Infrastructure Department does a great job as well. Um, we would, these things, people probably think sometimes we don't care, but sometimes finding the money can be very difficult even when the money has been promised uh, receiving the money can be quite difficult so I would just like the public to have confidence in us that we will continue to look at this and do something about it till it gets done cheers thank, thank you councillor Roberts are there any speakers against this motion please as there are no speakers against the motion I put the motion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. no speakers against Carried unanimously. 10.2 is the Cam River Reserve Public Art. There is a motion for noting the status update on the progress of the Cam River Reserve Public Art. Could I have a mover for this motion, please? So moved. Councillor Roberts, could I have a seconder? Seconded. Councillor Highland. Councillor Roberts, would you like to um, begin the debate, please? Um, look, it's actually been... As we can see, we've had a good look at this at Council. Um, I actually love this this project. I love it to bits. <laughs> um, obviously, with the All Abilities Playground at Anzac Park, um, it opens up the possibility uh, for Cam River to be used to its full capacity and potential. Um, 
I know online there has been some criticism about the removal of the boat, um, but having seen the public art that will be going into this space, um, it's quite interactive. It very much suits the theme of the region and um, I want the public to know that the council is doing everything it can um, regionally all across the municipal area. We have projects in Wynyard, we have projects in Somerset, Boat Harbour, Waratah. Um, this will be a massive boom for our area and the staff at council and the, the councillors that push this through deserve absolute massive credit. So thank you guys. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Highland, have you... Are oh. you yeah, just I think Councillor Roberts has touched on most things and uh, it's one of those slow-moving projects and because of what's going on around the bridge works and everything, we've sort of all got to come together at the end and the artwork is actually will be installed in January 2024, so looking forward to that. Yep, thank you, Councillor Highland. Any further speakers uh, for this motion? Um, any speakers against the motion, please? There are no uh, speakers against the motion. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Carried unanimously. 10.3, our youth plan, health and wellbeing plan, age-friendly communities plan. There is a recommendation for noting there, three plans. So could I have a mover for this particular motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Could Second I have a seconder, Councillor Highland? Councillor Roberts, could you please open the debate? I actually, the, since I've been on council, um, one of the, the greatest advantages of being on council is to look over the plans and obviously have workshops on and such. Um, I honestly just want to give a lot of credit to the pre-existing councillors, such as Councillor Bramage, Councillor Highland and yourself, Mayor Dunian. Um, these actual, these plans are, are wonderful. They're very informative and they show a lot of forward planning and future proofing as well. Um, I want members of the public to know that their health and safety and well-being is absolutely paramount to this council and they're doing a wonderful job. So, Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Highland, your light is on. Were you oh, wishing sorry. to speak? Yep. <laughs> you don't wish to speak. Are there any... Oh, Councillor Raw, would you please... Uh, yeah, just out of interest, um, can I ask a clarification question there? Around you certainly what's been can. Put forward? Uh, it talks about that um, the plans, um, because of COVID, have been interrupted, which of course would happen. Um, they're going to 2024, so the plan now will be pushed out. Um, is there a date that's been decided for when those plans will be reviewed, um, or has that that not been decided on yet? Or Mrs. Bradley, would you please respond? Um, through you, Mayor Dunningham. Uh, the plans will be, there, there was a year during COVID where um, it was just really difficult to deliver the things that um, we had to do it in such a um, different way. We repeated a year of the plan. Um, so what we anticipate is that uh, not in this coming annual plan um, actions but in next year's annual plan action it will be so June next year we'll have an annual plan action that will be to review the three plans and to do the process that we did with these which was to look at those plans and then write an implementation plan over the life of the plan which is um, prioritise the actions that we would and how we would roll those out for the life of the plan. Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. Are there any further uh, comments or questions uh, around this motion? Are there any speakers against the motion? As there are no speakers against the motion, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.4, our cemetery strategy. A recommendation that the council adopts the cemetery strategy. Could I have a mover, please? So moved. 
Councillor Roberts has moved motion. Could I have a seconder? I'll second that. Deputy Mayor Edwards. Councillor Roberts, would you like to um, open the debate? Thank you, Mayor Dunning. Um, you'll get no debate from me. I think this is a great idea. <laughs> um, again, um, I just want our, our community to know um, we're classified as a regional council and as a part of regional communities, um, the f part of the fabric of the community is the tight knittedness of the community and it's important that people who live here know that they are important to us in both life and death and that we provide um, quality cemeteries and uh, provision to care for people and their families. Um, I think it's a really nice touch from our council and that it shows that probably um, infrastructure that can be forgotten is actually very valued here. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any further comments or questions, please? Any comments against this particular motion? If there are no uh, comments against the motion, I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.5 Ballast Pit Road Speed Limit Reduction. There is a recommendation before us uh, that the council proceed with seeking the support and approval of the transport, transport commissioner to reduce the speed of Ballast Pit Road to 80 kilometres an hour. Could I have a mover, please? I'm happy to move with the recommendation. Deputy Mayor Edwards, could I have a seconder? I'm happy to second that. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Deputy Mayor Edwards, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I'm happy to support it. Um, we've talked to the stakeholders and got some feedback and not much feedback at all, but we've put it out to the stakeholders and I'm happy with that. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Edwards. Councillor Roberts. Uh, I just want to say real quick, um, Councillor Highland and Councillor Bramage both spoke very well before. Um, as obviously um, such a long time on council, they've seen this region change over time. Places like Ballast Pit, um, Cooper's Lane, traditionally um, they might be in of more agricultural, industrial areas, but over time we have a lot of um, houses having been built there and those places um, can be have gone from being industrial areas or agricultural areas to being family homes. So again, I think it shows a lot of consideration for the members of the public that we would look at ways to keep them safe on our roads. So uh, much credit to Council for this. So I actually really fully support it and uh, good job. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any further comments? Any speakers against the motion? Oh, Councillor Bramich, you wish to I, speak? I just have a question, if I may. Yes, you may. Madam Mayor, is to the General Manager, I guess, uh, <coughs> uh, so we haven't got these continuously coming up. What's the, what's the chance of getting the Commissioner or, or one of his staff people to go through our roads? Because I, I believe Secretary did a similar permit position and uh, what's the chance of that happening? But part of the issue, I think, Councillor Bramage, is not just limited to our municipal area or boundaries. I think part of the issue across the state is the inconsistencies of speed limits in rural roads generally. Um, so some councils you know, may lobby for 100, others 80, others 60. Um, so there's an, an inconsistency across the state. I, I seem to recall, and I'm looking to my right to see whether or not there's any clarification, I seem to recall reading something only a few months ago that potentially the state were looking at a, a more statewide model or it was being pushed through bodies such as RACT and, and others. So um, we'll perhaps explore a little further uh, that concept that you talk about and um, because I think uh, the, the issue is broader than just our municipal area. Thank you, and I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Councillor Bramich and uh, Mr GM. Yep. Are there any further speakers? Councillor Highland? Thanks, Madam Chair. Yeah, the, there was a couple of good things that came out of this uh, uh, check, if you like. When our staff did the assessment, uh, they, in, uh, they showed up a couple of black spot areas. Uh, I think one was Foster's Road, where there's lack of signage, I think, more than anything, on Foster's Road, where it comes into a T-junction onto Ballast Pit and also where Ballast Pit comes out onto the Calder Road. So just a couple of things simple like that that might save a life. Thank you, Councillor Highland. Are there any further comments? Any speakers against? I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 
I carried unanimously. 10.6, the policy review of borrowing and investment policy. There are two parts to this recommendation. Could I have a mover for this motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Highland, Councillor Roberts, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mayor Dunham. Um, okay, this is another thing I want, I've noticed having been a new councillor. Um, I must say that um, Miss Searle does an amazing job with our money. Um, there's 29 councils in Tasmania, of which 12 either break even or make a profit, of which we are one of those 12. Um, having, having looked at the finances, um, obviously having done the financial induction, being a new councillor, um, having read the spreadsheets, I'm very impressed with how our council operates. Um, we have, as far as I know, uh, $21.985 million of capital works expenditure for this financial year and upcoming. And um, to be able to do that and run at a profit shows the amount of um, nous that our council has financially. Um, to see that this was implemented in January 2020 and it's up for review, um, I want it on record for the public that council doesn't actually have to do this or have this policy. It's not a legal requirement. So to actually bring it in and uh, it shows um, a, an actual intention to do things as properly as possible and um, yeah, I think it's important considering that it's public funds at use. So very well done. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any further comments? Anyone who wishes to speak against the motion? No one wishes to speak against the motion. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.7, policy review, council meeting policy and procedures. The recommendation is that council adopt the amended council meeting policy and procedures effective immediately. Could I have a mover for this motion, please? I'll move the motion for debate. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Could I, I second it? Councillor yeah. Highland. Councillor Courtney, please open the debate. I'm going to vote against the motion. Um, I notice that we seem to be a little bit, it looks from the proposal that we're being regressive. Um, we, we got rid of the 15 minute mark unless we all voted on it. We've gotten rid of that. Um, we're suggesting again that there's a time limit. We're suggesting again there's a limit to questions. I think that's going backwards. I think what we had was, was working just fine and I think if we have problems we have to deal with them on an individual basis on the merit. I don't think, especially being someone who, who ran for council on transparency and accountability, that we should limit public questions or public question time because we work for the public. It's their rights. They have a right to come here and ask questions and I don't think going backwards on public question time is a good thing for this council to do. So I'm not going to be in favour of it. Open the debate. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Are there any speakers for the motion? Yeah, Councillor I'm certainly uh, in favour of it. I don't think we've made any uh, great changes. The only change I can really see is they've... Uh, uh, put a gag on me. I'm not allowed to call a point of order in <laughs> in public question time, but I think that's the major change. But um, I'm not too sure about cutting back questions and, and question time. I think we still, uh, we still allow the 15 minutes and then if we need another 15 minutes, the council votes and gives them another... Oh, it has. Sorry. I didn't see that. 15 minutes. Oh removed. But anyway, given having said that, I think over the period of the last two years, um, we haven't really had any major issues in the community. Uh, and I still think if there was a major issue, council would decide to allow some extra time. I think that would just be a given. You couldn't uh, have 80 people in here and then uh, close them down. I think that would be a a decision. I know there's a rule there, but I think that's up to council. Council has got Councillor the right Courtney, if you yeah, have comments to, to make, make a decision. you leave it until Councillor Hyde finished. And uh, as in reference to making rules to cut 
one person and, and out of the debate or ask, stop him from asking questions or... Um, that's just a bit of a, a, a fallacy. If they come and ask uh, different questions all the time, but when you ask the continuous uh, repetition of 15 questions week, uh, week in, week out, You've got to expect that people just get a bit sick and tired of that stuff. Uh, you need to go somewhere else to find another answer. But uh, I've got no problem with this, and I'd be uh, I'd be supporting it. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Highland. Through you, Mayor, I think it's important to clarify that the information Councillor Courtney is stating is not correct. The the updated policy does include the the fifteen minute period, as as always stated. And if you look to the table. It says if the 15 minute period set aside for public uh, statements that council may resolve to extend. Um, similarly, in public question time, the chairperson of an ordinary council meeting must ensure that if required, at least 15 minutes of that meeting be made available for questions by a member of the public. So there are limitations to the number of questions that can be asked by a person down to three, but the 15 minute principle remains. Thank you, Mr. GM. Deputy Mayor Edwards, you. Have your light on? I did. Um, I'm happy um, with the the policy review, but um, I feel that there's a little bit too much contentious around the table that I will go against it. And um, if it doesn't get through, then bring it through to um, another workshop just to discuss it. But I'm sure it will get up. So, Cal uh, Deputy Mayor Edwards, you're saying you're voting against this motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Roberts. Um. Again, I just want the public to know that we do look at these things as a legal requirement. So there, there is a legal requirement to do this. So that you know, in case there's a narrative that there is particular reasons, um, I can only speak for myself when I say that that's not a reason for me. Um, I want this council to be as publicly accessible as possible. Um, we must never forget who we represent. Um, I actually um, am happy to continue workshopping this. Um, I want a resolution that Council will find favourable as well as the public. So I also will be voting against it. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Raw. Yes, look, I'd just like to, to say that I will be voting for it because I don't think anything here has stopped anybody from saying anything. Um, I think part of our processes need to be precise and if you look at your question that you want to ask and you are precise in what you ask and you are straight to the point, that that has to be a positive. And also with your statements, it just means that you have probably thought about what you really um, want to put forward and you do it in a, a concise and succinct way. And all the meetings I've been to at Council, um, all questions have been answered in one way or another, either at the point of time or they're taken on notice to be answered. I've never seen a question not answered. Um, so look, I'm a pretty process orientated, driven type of woman um, and I see that um, that these changes only make our process concise, concise, good and constructive and you need to be able to fit in with the process that was is there and provided. So I'll be voting for it. Thank you, Councillor Raw. Are there any further speakers for or against? Councillor Bramage. Thank you. Well, I'd like to move that this motion lay on the table to the next council meeting so we can workshop it again, considering there's so much contention. Yeah, contention. So this is the procedural motion. That's what you're putting forward, uh, Councillor Bramage? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you, uh, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Bramage, are you going to speak to this procedural motion? Uh, you, no, you can't, sorry. I have to accept the official tender. Okay, I uh, accept that procedural motion and I need to put that one to the vote. Okay. All right, I'm going to go with a show of hands for this particular procedural motion. Um, all those in favour of this procedural motion, please raise your hands. Deputy Mayor Edwards, uh, 
Councillor Bramage, Councillor Courtney, Councillor Roberts. Those against the procedural motion. Uh, Councillor Raw, Councillor Highland, uh, Councillor Johnson and myself. Yep. The motion is lost. So we, go back to the original. we need to go back to the original motion now. Are there any more speakers for or against this motion, please? I'm. You, Councillor Johnson. I'm, I'm for it. Um, I, I think uh, speakers of the public have got an adequate time, 15 minutes plus, and if there's going to be a, a general um, contention about uh, a question um, and the allocated time of another 15 minutes, if needed, um, is, is ample. Uh, three, three questions per... Um, per speaker is adequate enough, I, I think, to um, put their case forward um, on any given night. Yes, there's going to be um, other speakers in the room. Are they going to be wanting to sit around um, for their time longer than the 15 minutes um, allocated? So I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnston. Uh, Councillor Courtney, I'll allow you to speak again. Yeah. Um, are there any more questions around this particular motion? Yeah, just uh, have you spoken yet, uh, Councillor Highland? I have, but I've got a question. A question. I'll allow the question. Uh, just through you, I'd ask with the GM just uh, just for a point of clarification. Um, just what happens uh, on that fifteen-minute period? Like, if we have a we have a crowd of people in the gallery, uh, and then council's got to move a motion to extend that. 50, what all that means? Just what it means to to give them ample time to do their questions. Or yep. statements. Thank you, Councillor Highland, Mr. G. M. I'll give I'll give him a minute while he finds his bit on the screen. As the policy reads, under section 31, is the uh, section 29, I think, of the new, new draft, um, the chairperson of an ordinary council meeting must ensure that, if required, at least 15 minutes of that meeting is made available for questions by the public. A uh, maximum of three minutes per question will be allowed uh, to ask questions. Uh, I'm just looking around for the clause around extension. And in the in the public statement section, 15 minutes is due allocated for public statements. Um, if the 15 minute period set aside for public statement time is reached, council by resolution may resolve statement time be extended. So you have a decision of the group to be able to extend it for a further 15 minutes. Um, I, I think it's important that to clarify too. Um, so the three questions refers to what can be asked at the meeting. So there's nothing stopping people from putting questions in on notice um, you know, or at any other time, to be honest. Um, they can email any one of us at any, in any time um, to which we will respond. So th there's still all those um, options available. Um, what the, 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 the clarity um, is provided around the public question time and the three questions um, remains to the, the questions at the council meeting. But to answer your question, Councillor Hyndon, I think the public statement time says that um, uh, council may resolve to extend. I can't see anything just quickly looking around that question time for that to occur. 
Thank you, Mr. GM. Are there any further statements, uh, Councillor Bramich? I, I moved that motion and it didn't get up, but I haven't talked to this one just in front Th of me. Thank you. Well, just hearing what the GM said and what's been said down the table, I'm going to support the motion in front of us, and I'll tell you why, because I don't believe a lot's changed to what we've had. People might beg to differ on that, but I think overall we've given everybody a pretty good run here for the last X amount of years, and we'll still do that. We will. It won't matter whether the Mayor says no many more questions or, or things, but if us councillors want it, we'll, we'll have to vote for it and, and have it. And no disrespect, Madam Mayor. I don't think we should change too much. It is pretty well straightforward. And let's take each meeting as each meeting comes up. I guess this limits questions in question one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And in question two, the same. I guess that might limit that a bit. And these are all entitled to put your questions in prior to the meeting and it's the same thing so I'll support the motion. Thank you Councillor Bramage. Councillor Laura you've spoken are you? I have so that means I cannot say anything That's more. right unless you have a question. Can, can I ask a question? You may ask a question. It's going to be difficult for me to think it but say it I'll try and say it. Can I ask of councillors that you think about, um, there might be um, ill feeling around um, the processes around the meeting and things, but, but what is the ill feeling around? Is it really around the processes? I agree with, with um, Gary that the processes haven't changed much. They're still open. Everybody can get their say, their answers are... Um, Th th they're given answers, so I think we're getting confused here. I'm, I'm not sure that it's the meeting procedures that it is the problem. Is it the answers and things, and people are unhappy with the answers, um, but they're saying it's the procedures of the meeting. I don't think it is the procedures of the meeting. I just think sometimes people are unhappy with the answers that they hear. Thank you, Mr Hutchison. You are not... Uh you are not allowed to speak from the gallery at this point in time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Raw. Uh, you've spoken, Councillor Roberts. I've got a question. You have a question. Please go ahead. Indeed. Um, look, w can we acknowledge that um, whatever is going on here is not personal and that um, obviously I just... You know, I'm not confused, to be honest. Um, and, you know, I want members of the public to be able to come here. Obviously, um, the council meeting policy and procedures, as I've said, has to be um, done. So it's not anything personal. But the question is, can we just acknowledge that we've all got our own viewpoints on this and that we are actually intending to come to a, a peaceful resolution? Thank you, Councillor Roberts. As there are no more comments, I ask Councillor Courtney to close the debate. I'll start with an apology. I thought that last one was about public question, Shane, and it's about public statements, so that's my mistake. And I saw removed, and my understanding was that that second clause had actually been removed. Is that correct? The, uh, that clause five, um, where it says no more than two... 15 minute extensions to public statement time are to be permitted, that, that clause has been removed. So there won't be extension on public statements? No, no, there's still a clause in there that says uh, if the 15 minute period set aside for public statements time is reached, council by resolution may resolve statement time be extended. That, that remains in there. And is that the same for questions? N no, I'm quickly flicking through. It appears the question time says that it's um, limited to 15 minutes. So statements can be extended, questions can't? That's what it reads. Okay. So, again, I'm going to stay by my decision to not support the motion. 
Um, obviously, I don't think that we should be restricting questions. I don't think that we should be restricting time. We can do it, um, you know, by answering on the night what is relevant, right and fair and discard or reject anything that's not relevant, right and fair. I just will also make a point that um, I never made a statement that it was to cut one person out of the debate, or, or nor did I insinuate it was to cut one person out of the debate. So if that's what you thought I said, perhaps you need to look at why you said that. Um, that's the end of me for tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. I'm going to call for a division on this particular motion. So all those in favour, would you please raise your hands? Deputy Mayor Edwards, Councillor Bramich, Councillor Raw, Councillor Highland, Councillor Johnson and myself. Those against? Councillor Courtney and Councillor Roberts. The motion is passed. Moving on to 10.8, quarterly information report, organisational performance. The Council note the quarterly information report for the Office of the General Manager, etc. Could I have a mover on this particular motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Could I have a seconder? Seconded. Councillor Highland has seconded. Councillor Roberts, do you wish to speak to this motion? I just want to say we're actually doing pretty good. So um, I'm rather quite impressed and uh, I'm very, very happy with how the council's travelling. Um, our staff deserve great credit for the job that they do, including Miss Searle, Miss Bradley and Mr Summers over there and obviously Mr Crawford. Um, We'll be keeping the lights on for a little bit longer yet. So, cheers, guys. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any speakers against this motion? Any further speakers at all? That uh, Councillor Raw, you look as though you're waiting. To oh, there. I just want to ask a question, but I'm just wondering. I had it in my notes. I just wonder whether I've got it in the wrong place. I'll try and ask the question here. I think it said, um, and I can't just get it up in front of me at the minute, that there were, th in the month or time, I think it was a month, there were three complaints to council um, and that was all it said. So I'm just curious as to what those um, complaints were and how they were resolved. Is that in this part or have I missed, got it in the wrong part? Yep. Uh, thank you, Councillor Raw. Mrs Searle, would you like to respond, please? Uh, yes, through, through you, Mayor. Thank you for your question, Councillor Raw. Um, Councillor, uh, we do report our complaints um, on a quarterly basis and in Council's annual report. So Council has a formal claim complaint and feedback process mm. as a part of its customer service charter. So we encourage our customers and any member of the community that have a um, that are dissatisfied with their experience with Council, either a lev level of service or a decision of Council outside of a structured process like planning um, to provide that feedback and that policy does provide for a process to follow up and um, resolve those matters. Um, I will need to take the specific question about what those complaints relate to on notice and provide that to you in writing. Um, and the three, and moving forward, I think on the basis of that question, it would add value to this report to provide some more information around that, the nature of the complaints. Um, and the three complaints were for the three months ended the 28th of February. So it was over a three month period, but um, I'll um, take that question on notice and provide you with that information out of the, out of, um, after the meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Searle. Are there any more speakers to this motion or against the motion? Question. Councillor Bramage, question. It's on page 63 of my agenda, Street naming and address change in, in uh, the new subdivision at the Hog Street. Is there a, a name being picked out? I see there's three being identified by the developer. Uh, pick one out and send it away, or, or does it come to us to pick, help pick it out, or what's the go? Mr. GM. Oh, no, oh. Mrs. Sir. Thank you. Um, through you, Mayor. Thank you for your question, Councillor Bramage. Uh, those three uh, new street names will um, have been selected and will be sent off for formal approval um, in accordance with Council's policy. Okay, are there any more questions, please, on this? Um, 
Councillor Bramich, your light is on. Were you wanting to ask any more questions? Or? Better not. Thank you, Councillor Bramich. Are there any more speakers as I have asked to this motion or against? If not, I put the motion as there are no speakers against. So could uh, you please say aye, those who are in favour of this motion? Aye. Against? <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.9 is the senior management report. The council note the monthly senior management management report and rescind the following policies. There are three there. If you, uh, if I could have a mover. So moved. Motion. So moved. So Councillor seconded. Courtney. Seconded by Councillor Roberts. Councillor Courtney, would you like to open the discussion? Uh, I'm happy with the report, apart from the fact that on page 72 it notes that Councillor Johnson and myself are part of the Aldina Reserve Stakeholder Group. Obviously we weren't. So I don't know what you want to do to resolve that. Uh, that's a question, is it, for um, our General Manager? Hi, oh, through Mayor, I don't think it needs any further comment. The Councillor Courtney and Councillor Johnson remain um, key parts of that Aldina Reserve Stakeholder Group. They simply weren't invited to the uh, first meeting by, by error. Um, there's nothing further I can say. Thank you, Mr. GM. Are there any further comments uh, for this particular motion? Any speakers against? If there are no speakers against, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.10 .10 is the financial report for the period ended 28th of February 2023. Could I have a mover for this particular motion, please? Uh, was that you, Councillor Courtney? Uh, could I have a seconder, uh, Councillor Highland? Thank you. Councillor Courtney, do you wish to open any discussion? Councillor Highland? No, I think, Madam Chair, things are running along uh, quite well from my point of view. I don't know whether any other councillors have got any queries, but no, I'm happy with that. Thank you for that. Are there any speakers against this motion? If there are no speakers against the motion, I put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 <coughs> Carried unanimously. 10.11, 10 10.11.1, minutes of other bodies, committees, Aldina Forest Reserve Stakeholder Meeting. Uh, so moved. Councillor Courtney. Seconded. Councillor Roberts, seconded. Councillor Courtney. Oh, like I think I've been pretty clear tonight through uh, internal discussions and obviously in the meeting that I'm not happy that I wasn't invited to the stakeholder group. Um, when I was approached by members from the committee as to why we didn't show up for the meeting, I was very embarrassed. So I'm very upset that as a committee member and a councillor that represents the community, I've had numerous discussions with people over the stakeholder group of Aldina and numerous discussions with the community about what they wanted there. And I'd done a fair bit of work to prepare for that meeting. So not being invited didn't just mean that, you know, by accident, Councillor Courtney and Councillor Johnson didn't get invited, but it meant that all the submissions that I had been given to put forward in that group then didn't see the light of day. And I didn't get to speak to the forestry people or understand any of the, the lease information, the questions I would have liked to have asked. So this report tonight is obviously the officer's point of view of how the meeting went. But I've spoken to the stakeholders and they felt that it was pretty clear that um, council staff were being pretty clear that we don't want to do any work in Aldina Reserve. And as the council as other representatives, I didn't feel it was right that that's the impression that the staff were given, that that should have come back to council. And I'd like this meeting to be held again. So the information that I have, I can put forward. I'm, I'm very upset that this has been done and I'm very upset I didn't get to speak on behalf of the people that came to me over the Aldina group and the Aldina area. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Your comments will be recorded and uh, made note of and um, we hope that um, um, there will be a resolution somewhere along the line. Councillor, Court, uh, Councillor Roberts, sorry. Look, again, I just want to comment on this myself. Um, it's not my group, um, but that doesn't mean that I don't care about the public's wants. Um, obviously, I must voice my concern. Um, with something as contentious as Aldine has been, there is a narrative that council doesn't want it done. Um, has, you know, I, at the AGM, I witnessed council vote against 
you know, and obviously for good reasons, um, to looking into it. So as a councillor now, I want the public to know that I am looking for a resolution. Councillor Courtney is also looking for a resolution. The wants and the needs of the community that they ask us to look at, we will look at. And it's not an employee's job to speak on behalf of the councillors to the members of the public. And obviously it is very concerning. I find it very concerning that somehow the staff just conveniently forgot. So uh, I'm absolutely dumbfounded to be honest. And um, I would expect that meeting to be re-held immediately with councillors present. Um, you know, I think Councillor Courtney's been very behaved about this because if it was me, I wouldn't. And uh, I just want that on record. We cannot feed the narrative that we do not care because the public has elected us to do exactly that. And we do care and we want to look at things like this and we do not want things like this to happen again. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Your comments will be noted as well in the uh, minutes. Councillor Highland, were you wishing to speak? Oh, thank you. Yes, I would like to be able to put in a Part B or an amendment to that item there, whichever I'll be guided by you. Uh, what are you well, uh, suggesting I'd or like proposing, uh, please? I'd like this, well, the past meeting, uh, the, that particular meeting, I'd like this subject, the Aldino Reserve, to come back to a workshop, council workshop, uh, where we can uh, go through it. And if I could just get a direction, I'll add a little bit more to that, if you like, if I want either an amendment or a Part B, I'm happy right, with Right, so it'll, it, you're uh, proposing an amendment to this particular motion? Yep with um, part A being that we receive the notes yep. and part B is... Yep. That the old INA project uh, be returned to a council workshop as soon as possible. That's what I'd like. Okay. If All I right. Can. So, uh, so we have an amendment. I would second you. that. Yep. Uh, thank you, right. Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Now I'd just um, refer councillors to page the bottom of page 65 and if they're up to date with the uh, council's annual plan and, and whatever goes on you may recall and this is probably for new newer councillors we've uh, what do you call it we've started a uh, feasibility study or commissioned a feasibility study on the uh, track the old railway line from Wynyard to Smithton and in the discussions of that and I, I might just point out that council uh, from my perspective are certainly not against the old Una Park are certainly not against councillors are not if you if you were here at every meeting and the amount of work that was put in by the staff and the council in regard to holding uh, sustainable timbers around the table uh, and there was a fair bit of heat on at the time with trying to organise meetings and bring everyone together, the pony club issue. So the work that's actually gone into that. Um, and the discussion around the, the, the road, uh, the walk to whatever you like to call it, to Smithton, the first spur, if you like, I can use that word, the first link off that road was a, a direct link into Aldina area. And the reason we were going to do that well, that was the discussion and the, the ideas put forward was to construct a couple of uh, mountain bike tracks, either a, call it an A and a B, which would be a tough one and a, probably a more simple one for mum and dad and three kids. So, like, this has all been discussed. Now, why would council just drop that? We've got to have ideas that we've got to work on and continue to work on so that the next lot of councillors after us can they've got something to actually grab hold of and, and work with. So I'd just like us to get that back to the workshop and get it back on an even keel. And I just would like to point out to those that are uh, uh, criticising why they, they never got notified, people are human and they do make mistakes and we've got new staff in new positions. So to me, they've been just, they haven't been notified. As clear as that. So I think you need to accept that and move on. 
Thank you. Councillor Roberts. Look, uh, thank you very well spoken, Councillor Holland. Um, I think, honestly, and I mean this very genuinely, our late mayor, uh, um, Mr. <laughs> he's not late, but no, our old mayor, our previous our mayor, Mr. Our Welch. Our ex mayor. Our yes. ex mayor. There's got to be a right way to say that. Um, look, again, our ex mayor, Robbie Walsh, Councillor Bramage, Councillor Holland, yourself, Mayor Dunham, have done an excellent job safeguarding our community. Um, I would not, and, and Councillor Holland to state that it's about councillors going forward to make these decisions, absolutely. Um, the public elects members to represent them and speak on their behalf. Now, again, obviously there, there can be, um, without understanding the reasons why certain decisions are made, it can look like we are not interested in listening to what the community is asking of us. Now, it is very, very concerning that we would ever, as councillors, be painted in that light because I know there are many of us that are actually open, open to that possibility. For anyone, members of the public that are looking and watching this, I want it to be known, as is stated by many of us here tonight, that we are very, very interested in hearing of any possibilities for Aldana Reserve and find a resolution that will suit the public, the council, sustainable timbers. Uh, where there's a will, there is a way, and with the right amount of consultation, perhaps, perhaps we can achieve this. And if we cannot, then at least we'd have an explanation as to why not. Um, Obviously, human error does happen, but I am very understanding of Councillor Courtney's position on this and also Councillor Johnston, as well as a new councillor, was perhaps robbed of an opportunity to understand this matter a little bit more. So I would expect our council to rectify that and actually probably re-hold that meeting if possible. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Are there any more speakers to the amendment? Any speakers against the amendment? I'm going to put that amendment. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. No, sp no one's voted against. Carried unanimously. The amendment now becomes the motion. Okay, as this is now the motion, I can now reopen the debate. Are there any speakers for the uh, this motion? No speakers for or against? If that's the case, I now put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried unanimously. We're up to item 11, matters proposed for consideration in a closed... Uh, meeting that the council resolves by an absolute majority that the matters listed below be considered in closed meeting. Could I have a mover, please? I'll move. Deputy Mayor that. Edwards, could I have a seconder? Yes. Uh, Councillor Highland. I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Carried unanimously. Item 12, closure of meeting to the, Repub uh, to the Republic, no, to the public actually, uh, that the Council resolves by an absolute majority that to go into closed meeting to consider the following matters at 7.55pm. Could I have a mover, please? Oh, uh, Councillor Bramage, could I have a seconder, please? I'll second. Councillor Johnson. I'll put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Thank you, gents, for your...